गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सेकेंड टर्म ऑफ नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड टूडे लेट एस बिगिन विथ साइंस टू चैप्टर नंबर फिफ्टीन लाइफ प्रोसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल बी स्टडिंग ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन प्लांट्स एक्सक्रीशन इन प्लांट्स एनिमल्स एंड ह्यूमन बींग्स coordination in plants and human beings now can you recall how does the digestive system and respiratory system work now we have already learned this but let's recall it okay so we all know that digestive system converts the complex food stuffs into simple soluble absorbable nutrients simple soluble and absorbable one which can be absorbed so the nutrients with the help of enzymes who does this work enzymes now this soluble nutrients are supplied to each cell with the help of blood blood is the transportation system in our body then the lungs are there which are the important organs in the respiratory system this is the place where the oxygen diffuses in the blood diffuses means enters the blood this oxygen is also supplied to every cell with the help of blood circulation both the digestive as well as the respiratory systems are under the control of the brain so their functions are in coordination with each other i hope you recalled all this okay now let us continue with this chapter we have studied how digested food or oxygen inhaled by lungs is transported to every cell of the human body the farmer also tries to transport the water from wells or dams through a main channel to every plant the food absorbed by the digestive system is converted into energy this energy and oxygen are both transported via blood throughout the body so now let us see the concept of transportation by the process of transportation a substance either synthesized synthesized means formed or absorbed in one part of the body reaches another now how does transportation occur in plants so let us study this why do we eat fruits and vegetables do the plants also need minerals like we do yes we eat fruits and vegetables to get minerals essential amino acids and all the essential minerals and micronutrients for our body now the plants also need minerals for growth now second question from where do the plants get inorganic substances other than carbon dioxide and oxygen so they obtain it from the soil now most plants move from place to place but plants do not there are many dead cells in the plant body they need less energy as compared to animals plants need inorganic substances like nitrogen phosphorus magnesium manganese sodium etc you can underline these in your textbook okay so these are the um, inorganic substances they require now soil is the nearest and richest source of these substances roots of plants absorb these substances from the soil and transport them there are specific types of tissues to perform this function the xylem underline conducts the water whereas the phloem conducts the food all parts of the plant are connected with these conducting tissues now use your brain power see the question there which types of plants tissues are xylem and phloem so you can write there conducting tissues yes what type of tissues are they conducting tissues 
Now, let us see transportation of water in plants. Try this. Root pressure. Take a small plant like balsam or tuberose. I hope you know tuberose. In Marathi, we call it as nishigand. It is used in the bouquets and all. Those white flowers are there like the tuberose. With its roots intact. Wash and clean its roots. As shown in the figure 15.1, keep it in the water containing a stain like saffronin or eosin. So eosin are stains, they give color. Now observe the stem and the veins of the leaves after 2 to 3 hours. Now in this picture you can see, huh? eosin solution is there in the beaker. Okay, the beaker is kept there, the plant is attached with the help of a stand, the stem, the leaves and the veins. You can see everything is turned red. Eosin is red in color. So, it has turned all red. Now, let us go to the next page, page 164 and let us see what and how does it occur. Now, you observe. Take a transverse section of the stem of a plant and observe the stained xylem under the compound microscope. Now, vertical, you all understand a vertical section and transverse means horizontal section. Okay, So, horizontally we have taken the section and let's observe. Now, look at the picture 15.2 absorption with the help of roots. Okay, Now, here... We have taken a section of this small square in the roots. You can see in the picture there the big arrow is shown. The blue color arrow and that is enlarged picture. So water is absorbed by the root hairs. You can see the root hairs are marked there. So from the root hairs it goes to the cortex of the plant. Okay, their cortex is a tissue. And then from there it goes and it goes into the xylem. You can see the arrows how the water is being transported you can see the soil particles also now here what happens root cells are in contact with water and minerals in the soil water and minerals enter the cells on the root surface due to differences in concentration means outside and inside the concentration is different as a result these cells become turgid turgid means swollen Okay, you can write the meaning that turgid means swollen. These turgid cells exert pressure on the adjacent cells. Adjacent means other cells. How you people push each other when you are standing in the line. A pressure is created and all fall down. Or the cycles, when one cycle falls, the other falls. So like this, what happens is the cells, they become turgid, swollen up. And hence, they exert pressure on the adjacent or neighboring cells. What is this called? This is called root pressure. You can underline it. Under the effect of this pressure, water and minerals reach the cells of the xylem of the roots and to reduce these differences in the concentration, they are continuously pushed forward. <coughs> Excuse me. As a result of this continuous movement, a water column is formed which is continuously pushed ahead. This pressure is sufficient to lift the, the water up in the shrubs, small plants and small trees. So I hope you have followed how the continuous column of water is formed and water is pushed up, up to the tip of the plants. Okay. So now let us go to the next concept of transpiration pull. Now in the picture you can see here Certain plants are there and some uh, leaves are there okay, and some cells. Now here, can you recall? Previously, you have performed the activity of absorbing the branch covered in plastic bag. What did you observe in that activity? It was seen that the inner side of the bag, you can see the mixture. Okay, now look at the figure 15.3, transpiration through leaves. Now, plants give out water in the form of vapor through the stomata on their leaves. Now, in the picture, you can see the stomatal opening. So, when the school begins, we can do this practical. I will show you the stomata also. Don't worry, we will take the section and I will show you the stomatal openings also whenever the school begins. 
सो दीज सेल्स कंट्रोल द ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग ऑफ द स्टोमेटा ओके सो दे आर लाइक द डोज ऑफ द विंडोज क्लोजिंग एंड ओपनिंग नाउ ट्रांसपरेशन अकर्स थ्रू दिस स्टोमेटा वॉटर इज रिलीज इन टू द एटमोसफियर बाय लीव थ्रू द प्रोसेस ऑफ इवेपोरेशन एज अ रिजल्ट वॉटर लेवल इन द एपिडर्मल लेयर ऑफ द लीव डिक्रीजेस एपिडर्मल इज द टॉप लेयर ऑफ द सेल्स सो वॉटर इज ब्रॉड अप टू द लीव थ्रू द जाइलम सो एज टू कॉम्पनसेट फॉर द वॉटर लॉस ट्रांसपरेशन हेल्प इन अब्जॉर्बन ऑफ वॉटर एंड मिनरल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन टू ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट वेर एज रूट प्रेशर परफॉर्म द इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल ऑफ पुशिंग द वॉटर अप ड्यूरिंग द नाइट टाइम नाउ लुक एट द फिगर योर ओके स्मॉल सेक्शन ऑफ द लीफ इज टेकन वेर यू कैन सी द गार्ड सेल्स द अजॉइनिंग सेल्स आर गार्ड सेल्स एंड दैट ओपनिंग ना इज कॉल्ड इज एस टोमेटल ओपनिंग ओके एंड वॉटर इज टेकन अप योर एंड वॉटर इवेपरेट थ्रू द स्टोमेटल ओपनिंग एंड यू कैन सी द थिन लेयर ऑफ एपिडर्मल सेल्स दे and in the first picture you can see the minerals are taken up by the roots and water is also taken up how it goes there and sugar is formed they are produced and water is evaporated okay so this is called as transpiration pool now let us see a small video on this topic transpiration pool transpiration pool the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plants like stomata of leaves is known as transpiration transpiration pull means drawing up of water from the roots to the plant mechanisms of transpiration evaporation of water from the leaves into the atmosphere results in a decrease in the water potential of the epidermal cells The lost water in the leaf is replaced by the xylem vessel. A suction is created which helps to pull water from xylem cells of roots and hence helps to absorb more water. Thus, the transpiration pull helps in absorption and movement of water and dissolved minerals in plants during the day when the stomata are open. You know this upward pull of water is just like the upward pull which makes a drink rise in the straw when we drink juice through it. When you suck the straw, the liquid enters your mouth and the empty space in the straw is filled with more liquid. This is how we drink the juice with a straw. During the night, the effect of root pressure is important for absorption and movement of water and to dissolve minerals in plants now let us continue with the next page now here on page 165 do you know is deleted that pink box yeah is fully deleted now let us learn transportation of food and other substances in plants the food produced in the leaves is transported to each cell in the plant body excess food except amino acids is stored in the roots fruits and seeds you can underline that except amino acids is stored in the roots fruits and seeds this process is called as translocation okay you can underline that definition translocation of materials it is carried out in both the upward and the downward directions by the phloem translocation of materials is not a simple physical process it requires energy this energy is obtained from atp you can underline atp now what is this atp we'll see it later whenever food material like sucrose is transported towards a part of a plant via the phloem with the help of atp the water concentration decreases in that part again i am reading whenever food material like sucrose is transported towards a part of a plant via the phloem with the help of atp the water concentration in that part decreases so as a result 
water enters the cell by the process of diffusion you have learned diffusion the pressure on the cell walls increases due to increase in cellular contents due to the increased pressure food is pushed into the neighboring cells where the pressure is low this process helps the phloem to transport the materials as per the need of the plant during flowering season the sugar stored in the roots or stem is transported towards the floral buds to make them open and blossom so now you can understand whenever floral buds are opening the then sugar from the roots or stem is taken and is transported there now let us watch a video on this topic transport of food and other substances phloem is another transporting tissue in plants you also know that prepared food materials are conducted through phloem vessels it is through the small opening in the cross wall that the cytoplasm of adjacent sieve tube cells become continuous the prepared food from the leaves is conducted through the sieve tubes to other parts of the plant sugars and other metabolites synthesized in the leaf and hormones synthesized at the shoot and root tips are transported to other parts of the plant through phloem food is transported in dilute aqueous solution transport of food from leaves to other parts of the plant is termed translocation various theories have been proposed to explain translocation most widely accepted one is the mass flow hypothesis this hypothesis states that the movement of organic compound is along a concentration gradient main points of this hypothesis are mentioned below the process of manufacture of food that is photosynthesis occurs in the leaves food or sugars formed as a result of photosynthesis diffuses into the phloem cells of leaf veins by utilizing energy from atp molecules as a result osmotic potential of phloem cells lower and water from the xylem enters sieve tubes which are elongated tubular cells the hydrostatic pressure developed in the sieve tubes pushes the phloem sap down towards the roots having low turgor pressure the process in which food materials are translocated between the source of food materials to the site of utilization is called downward translocation of food upward translocation of food is the movement of food from storage organ to the developing fruits flowers and buds in the upward direction radial translocation is the transverse movement of food within the stem from center to outside like pith to cortex movement of materials in the phloem moves according to the plant needs